These are Cameroonians returning from abroad. But unlike the usual adrenaline flow that characterized homecoming of one who had missed their country for a while, these three Cameroonians are lamenting over all the ordeals they have been subjected to while in abroad. My legs were all killing. That I was dying. My body was dying. I, you go to bed 1, 1 a.m. in the morning. That's the least time you can go to bed. At times, you go to bed 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you get up 7, 8. If they want to pity you, you can get up 8 o'clock. And they don't feed you well. They don't give you food well. It's only by the grace of God that some of us are even coming out from that Kuwait. They give you funny dresses to wear. They eat. They eat before you eat. You eat from their left, from their remains. Having worked in Kuwait for over six months under all sorts of inhumane conditions, these girls, like others over there, ran away from their set slave masters and sought refuge in a quarantine camp where the prayed somebody somewhere can rescue them. The way they are treating our fellow girls there is unfair. For instance, when you're working in the house, you have little time. You don't even have time for yourself. You work all through. You don't, at times you don't he walks six to six, no sleeping. Then some of the guys, let's see their husband, they are trying to rape girls there. So girls, our girls are very, are, they are suffering. Please, we are begging, if they can try and stop the attitude of girls trafficking in Kuwait, it will be better for us. Because there are still girls there that are, that are suffering. They don't even have means, they don't have way to go to. The Committee for the Fight Against Human Trafficking and Rights Abuse, also known as Komathra, investigated on the sufferings of these Cameroonians in Kuwait and then sought resources to secure their flight back home. I had the return of uh, my Vice President in the person of uh, uh, Awa Francisca Ramsey, who is a returnee from uh, Kuwait, and uh, who came back with a horrible story when she came, even her physical appearance was so frightful. So this, in fact, uh, being a human rights activist, uh, I felt really compelled to join hands with her in order to, uh, you know, fight this ill. And uh, she, as one of those who went through what she went through, was ready to fight fight back and get uh, some of our sisters who are still trapped there uh, come back. And so we decided therefore to form uh, this association that is today uh, yielding fruits. At least five of our uh, sisters who were held trapped in Kuwait uh, coming back uh, thanks to our efforts. According to statistics provided, over 600,000 girls work as domestic servants in the Middle East and of this number, many of them are subjected to inhumane treatment. There is no girl coming from Kuwait with good health. We meet some of them coming back here with wounds on their body. Some of coming there, coming here with, no, with none of their dresses. What they face there is horrible. There is no good work. There is nothing. They don't even pay them. But they, take, they, don't, they don't only take them like slavery, but they take them like, 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 like animals sex machine, they use them in any type of thing they want. They don't even sleep on bed, they sleep on, on the empty floor with rat, with, 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 with cats. Promised all sorts of sugar-coated jobs by the agents, these ladies say their arrival in Kuwait literally began their pain. My most difficult moment in Kuwait was when my master started abusing me and the ill treatment that I got when I was sick. You know, I work in the house, a three-story building. There I do, I was the only mate in that house. That was my third house because I stayed in three houses in Kuwait. That was my third house and the most durable house because I stayed there for two whole months. The master doesn't allow me to sleep because the wife traveled. I was in hell. I massage him every day, sometimes three times daily. The way steps are arranged, he said that he has hit his botox from there. He started asking me to be massaging him. I did that for almost two weeks, two days before I ran away from the house. But while in the house, I was doing everything. Like these three? There are many Cameroonians still languishing behind domestic slavery, hoping heaven save their poor selves. It is such a touching situation. The government, they say, have to look into this. There are many of them like them. There are many still in Kuwait. They say they are in the shelter. Others say they are lamenting in their master's house. This is just a tip of an iceberg. We have to do something. 
while working hard to secure the return of many other Cameroonians still in Kuwait, the association Komathra hopes somebody somewhere join them to bring these girls home.